Jim, I'm holding in my hand a check for a quarter million dollars. This goes to anyone who can prove paranormal ability under test conditions. So just know that. Seriously? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, that check is as good as mine. Oh, come on. I have been able to move things with my mind since I was a kid. You, okay. Uh, here. Yeah, this, pony up. This is a uh, perfect example, a uh, cigar case, okay? You don't even smoke. It, I know, but there it is. Okay. Right. Watch this. Get ready to put the name on yeah, that. Sure. Son of a... Oh. Hell yeah, baby! Oh. That's it. Shut it down. Uh, John, grab those lights. Get those cameras. It's over. Get the It's checkbook. over. Paranormal. Right here. Here, let's I do this. I can't believe this. I, uh, o H E I R. Who's got the pen? Uh, uh, Who's got the pen? Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Underdown. I'm chair and founder of the Center for Inquiry Investigations Group, and I'm here with my good friend Jim O'Hare. You know him from Parks and Recreation as Jerry Gergich. I know him from a great movie called Middleman. Yes. You starred in it. I did. As Lenny. But, yeah, thanks for coming in today. My pleasure. You know I love this kind of crazy stuff. So we're going to be talking about telekinesis today. Yeah. That's the ability to move things with your mind alone, not touching them. Which is wild. Yeah, it yeah. would be. If and if you could, okay, so say you had the power, which I know you don't believe, but if you did, what would you do with it? Me personally? You, Jim Underdown, what would you do? <laughs> I would head straight to Las Vegas, start out at the craps table with 10 bucks, of course. start throwing the dice, start winning, big pile of money, take that money, I would go straight to the roulette wheel, make the little ball fall in my number every time. Fill all my pockets with money, and I'd go straight to the bar, order the best scotch, and I'd make the scotch come over into my hand. That's what I would do. Makes what would you do? Uh, I mean, something kind of like that. Yeah. I don't know, like maybe, I don't know, help kids in the hospital. <laughs> maybe, oh. I don't know. Is there a way to use that brain power to, I don't know, cure cancer, perhaps world peace? I don't know. We're kind of in the same area, same zone, yeah. but a little different. Okay, well. To each his own. Okay. To each his own, my friend. All right, oh. so the, the, the definition of telekinesis, just so we know what we're talking about, tele, from the Greek, tele, from afar, kinesis, to move. It's the ability to move something outside of your body to make it move. So we've seen this lots of times. We have this $250,000 prize, and people apply all the time. In fact, let's take a look at some video of what people out there are saying they can do as far as telekinesis goes. There are many, many ways to develop and cultivate your telekinetic powers. First, I want you to get a crystal. You can imagine that there is a hot ball of energy between your palms. A psi whale is basically a piece of paper folded that rests upon a sewing needle. Imagine that your hands are a magnet and the piece of paper is made of metal. And uh, that's how it's done. So, uh, pretty impressive stuff. Huh? <laughs> that's the example? Yeah, people all the time, they're sending us these videos with, with stuff just like this. There'll be a little piece of foil. See, I just actually only breathed you, on it. You just went there. Yeah. And if we've learned nothing else, what we have learned is that telekinesis is like the worst superpower in the whole world. It is. It, it, it at, does very little. At this level, it certainly is. But this wow. is, these are, we've actually, I've taken these two things off of actual claims. But it's not just, and by the way, the air conditioning is off in this room. And stop breathing, will you? That's the thing. Anything will move them. <laughs> yeah. Anything. Anything. It's, it's just such a light thing. But it also happens in water. We had a guy. He shows up. We got a bowl of water. And he just he pours the water in here. This is very Bill Nye the science guy oh, yeah. situation. Oh, that's yeah. We're real. We're science. <laughs> so... And we're going to let this settle in. But he throws a toothpick in this, and he said he was controlling what was going on with the toothpick. Okay, so the real question is, 
what is going on. And I, I, I want to show you what happened with the toothpick. But we're going to, to be fair, we have to let this water settle yeah, for a minute. Moving around. Yeah, so that's not fair to do it that way. But let's, we'll go to Ray Hall. He's our friend. He's a professor of physics at Cal State Fresno. And he's going to talk a little bit about the physics, what's happening in a room or in a bowl like this that might cause that kind of motion. Ray? Hey, Jim and Jim. Ray Hall here, uh, Department of Physics, Fresno State. And yes, let's discuss fluids. So um, when we see some mysterious motion, like a piece of paper or moving, um, typically that's going to be due to the fact that it's immersed in a fluid which is in motion. Air and uh, is, is considered uh, by physics standards a, a fluid, and so, so is water, even though it's much more dense. So things that can't sustain a shear force is the technical definition of a fluid. But uh, it turns out what I'd like to discuss today is that on Earth, at least, um, a static fluid, a fluid that's not in motion, is an exception rather than a rule. So uh, most of the time on Earth, there's temperature differences, uh, things interacting with the fluid that we're immersed in that's causing motion in that fluid. And that motion can be rather sustained. Um, to illustrate that, here's a device that allows us to actually see um, fluids in motion. It's called a caleroscope, and it's filled with something called a rheoscopic fluid. Here, just the motion of bringing it up here has set the fluid into motion. And if I just flick my wrist, you can see the intricate and sustained um, fluid motion that occurs and is sustained. Now, a rheoscopic fluid is an interesting uh, uh, invention. It's little tiny microscopic crystals that are elongated and their orientation will reflect or not reflect light. And that's what allows us to see what's going on in this fluid. But most fluids are transparent. Uh, but just to make a case, let's use the clariscope again. In this video, I placed the clariscope on my fingertips and just the thermal difference between uh, the temperature difference between my fingertips and uh, body temperature and the surrounding uh, room temperature creates convection cells. Now, convection is uh, a well-known property of, of, of buoyancy, where the warmer fluid is less dense than the um, cooler fluid, and so it tends to rise to the top. It floats to the top as less dense things are wont to do, according to Archimedes. Um, and so you get these convection cells. This is motion that's happening because of temperature differential. These occur all around the world in lakes, in oceans, and in the sky. Uh, cumulus clouds are convection cells that are interacting and um, churning the sky uh, in this way that is typically invisible or slow on slower scales. But uh, that's the point today is that most of the time, if you see some motion and it's unexplained, um, think that it might be a fluid that's in motion and carrying that piece of paper or what have you uh, with it. So it's some basic physics. Thanks, Ray. Okay, so let me show you what, what, the, what the guy did when he came here. He took a, he took a toothpick and he, he dropped it in there. And he was saying that he was controlling. Look at, look at how much that thing is moving. Right on, now. On, a, on a non moving water. Yeah, the water is essentially still, or it looks still, but there are lots of different reasons that thing's moving on its own. So, all right. So this one of them being me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Says you. Says me. Yeah. Um, so I want to split. This is one of the paranormal claims that actually you can split right down the middle into two sort of separate ideas. And those separate ideas are people mistaking something like that happening for their own minds doing it and the world of cheaters who are actually... Thanks I didn't, for pointing to I didn't me. Mean yeah, to I saw that, you. yeah. With both hands, you went <laughs> right in. Uh, who are absolutely doing something on purpose. Yeah. So the question might I ask is, how do you tell the difference? Because if this is going on by itself, mm -hmm. and some people are cheating, well, one of the things I like to do, excuse me, reach here, to see what's going on inside a bowl like this, I'm going to drop down just a little bit of food coloring to show you one drop. And see, right off the bat, that's, that's starting to go this way. Mm -hmm. And the food coloring... It's doing the same thing that the, 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 uh, that the toothpick, toothpick is, is doing. doing. Yeah. Exactly. 
So there may be little things happening on the air or inside slight temperature, like mm -hmm. Ray was talking about, that is actually the cause of this. Thing. The exact same movement. Right. So we don't want to let those forces take over. So in the case of something like this, we would leave this bowl of water sitting here for a long time in a room that we know is still to try to make everything as, as static as possible. And then the other fun thing we would do is we would say, Jim, you think you're moving this with your mind. Okay, here's what you got to do. Rotate it 90 degrees <laughs> clockwise, yeah. stop it, then go 180 the other direction. Those directions would be random, yeah. and you would have to do that. Yeah. Changes the whole picture. Changes right? everything, yeah. yeah. But do you think someone truly would feel they're doing this? This little movement that is obviously from the the water doing whatever, the dye is doing the exact same movement. Do you think they truly believe that? It's a great question, and I'm often asked how many, what percentage of the applicants are cheating on the $250,000 prize? And the answer is 0% are cheating. Every single person that we've tested over the last 22 years has genuinely believed that they have the ability. And they're, a lot of times they're often... They're shocked that they aren't able well, to do it. Because if they believe it, they think they're leaving here with a quarter of a million yeah. dollars. But it's our job to make all these, to prevent all these other things. I'm going to give you one more example. Let me this over here. Wow. So with something in the air like this, we would use a bell jar. And then because you can, it's hard to even see here, but there might be just a hair of an opening there. So, yeah, we would take piece of tape and I would go all the way around the side and make a nice super clean seal on mm -hmm. the side um, by the way you know if, if you know someone's rolling down the hall with a big card or something or there's an earthquake or something else happens that doesn't count right of course you know you yeah. have to you have to do it yeah so yeah we're gonna take every possible opportunity to eliminate all these cheats and there are other cheats. People use magnets inside on their hands. They wear <laughs> fake fingers. Well, that's a full-blown cheat. That's yeah. not even... Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Some of the stuff is just people making a mistake. Yeah. The cheaters, we, we have some idea mm -hmm. what to do. Okay. So now you're saying 100% of the people that have come, you truly, they believe right. that they can do this. Right. So how do you know all about these cheaters and how do you know of their ways? I trust no one. Please. You know. You are the most skeptical person in the world. Well, yes. I, listen, do you want to put up the $250,000? Okay. I do not. Well, just because no one's tried it doesn't mean we don't take these precautions. Let me show you a couple more precautions. Um, we might ask someone who we suspect of blowing through their nose like or whatever your you mouth. did, yeah. your mouth to do that, to wear a mask. We may put plexiglass in front of them. We might even, in the case of something that's light being moved, put some kind of little confetti or packing popcorn or something like that that would move and tell us that they're blowing on it right in front of the And animal. then how about someone who is using a magnet or something like that? How would you, first of all, how do you even know to look for that? Is it in their hands? Is it up their sleeves? It's part of our policy to check people. We wand people with a metal detector before every Smart. test. So we're going to wand you. We're going to say, we need to see your hands. We might run a piece of steel or something over it to see if click yes. something's <laughs> That would be funny. So I, I don't pretend to know all the tricks, but yeah. we're going to cover as many of them as we can. And yet you've never had someone come in who's trying for the money with a trick up their sleeve. No. That and you're aware, at least that you're aware. Not that we're aware of. And and they may be self-selecting. I mean, you know, if these people know we're taking all these preventative actions, they're just not going to show up. A lot of people just yeah. never show up. Oh, does that happen? So they're all oh, they're all mouth until they have yeah. to. Yeah. They either don't show up or they find out what the test protocol is going to be in there. They disappear. Wow. I do want to be here the day that it's proven. Yeah, I hope you live I a long life because you're going to need every bit of it. Okay, so we've basically narrowed it down to two categories. One, people mistaking natural phenomena for something that they are actually, they think they're doing themselves. Mm -hmm. And the other one is cheaters who we always are watching out for because they want to take our quarter million dollars. Two categories. And then there's the third. 
it's real. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay. There, are, there is actually a third category, and that category is things that do things in an unexpected way. And it turns out there's a lot of different things that fall under this category. We had somebody who had a uh, stone ball like this, and he was spinning it on a glass table, and thinking that because it was walking around on the glass table that he was doing that himself. Right. When in actuality, if you spin a ball on a, any kind of table, it's going to move. Okay, that's, okay. I'm I know, no genius, I, but come on. Believe me, the people <laughs> we deal with. Okay, there was another one. Now, this one was a little weirder. Somebody said he spun a top very similar to this, and the top went around several times on its own, mm -hmm. totally expected. Then it stopped. Let's see if we can get... It stopped, and it went back the other way, almost, and went all the way back around and like spun even 360 the other way. It almost just did it right there. How is that? I, it, it, <laughs> How we, is that happening? I, I know, it worried us because we had to actually talk to a physicist and try to understand what was going on here. And what was going on here was either the top itself was not symmetrical, so it had Perfectly a little bit of bump okay. on it, or the table. It was a low friction surface, so I think it was a glass table. The table also might have had a little buckle or a bow in it or something. So when it got to the very top of this thing and then went back, it had enough energy to go oh. all the way back around. Very surprising and unexpected. Yeah. The last one is, this is a thing called a rattleback. Now, a rattleback, um, we can do an experiment right now. You try to stop this with your oh, mind. Okay, it's just yeah, like it's just a thing. plastic thing. There's okay. no nothing in it. It's just okay. cl cl clear plastic. <clears throat> uh, try to stop it from rolling. <laughs> You're not trying very hard. Stop, stop, try stop. hard. Okay. Stop. I'm gonna, stop. Right. Now try it again. Get your mind together. <laughs> yes. Relax. Yeah, I'll try hard. Zen. Uh -huh. Okay, now stop it. I want, I'm going to roll it. You stop it and make it go the other way. Okay. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Unbelievable! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, wow, get that check and shut this down. So the short explanation is this thing has an unusual shape on the bottom, and it the way this thing is shaped, it changes the circular spin into a different kind of energy. And yet the one direction, it, it will do that forever. Yeah. But this direction... Stops it's going to stop itself and go, and go completely back around, but sometimes even a couple of times. That's wild. But they come here thinking you're not going to know that. Well, no one's ever tried to pull that on it because that, that you can just buy on the Internet. But it's a weird thing that if you never saw that before, you would say, that's really weird. How could yeah. that possibly even happen? Where's my assistant? I need one. Amazon? Uh, order, yeah. We'll get Two one. of them. We'll get, that'll be your pay. I have syndication money. Two of them. No, this will be your pay for today. I'll oh. get you one of these. Forget it. So that covers most of the claims, these type of simple Which are, like they're that. wild and they're fun to see. Yeah. Some of those really blew my mind, that spinning thing. I, I still don't get. I mean, I get it, but I don't get it. Uh, I'm not very bright. But anyway, here's my question. Do you ever have people come in and they really do it up? Like, these are simple. Like, I can... Everything here could have sat next to me in my front seat. Right. Does anybody bring... I mean, like something big? Something big. Like I can move a plane, a truck, a car, a horse. I don't know. We had a guy who said he could move an SUV from a, a, a stopped position in a parking lot. Do you want to see how I we would... would? Lo that would... Yes. Well, yes. I'll show you exactly how we would test something like that. I would love well, let's to go. see. We got a parking lot right out here. Okay, so we're in the CFI parking lot. What we would do in a test like this, and we actually had someone who said he could move an SUV, and this was the same sort of precautions we took. We had our guys, our team members, tape off the wheels on three different sides, and then had a vertical stripe so you know if it's rotating or if it's moving in any direction. Cool. So what I'm gonna ask you to do, it's not an SUV, it's much lighter, you should be able to do it. <laughs> Uh, is just move this car in any direction. This is easy. Okay. This is what I do every yeah. day, people. Okay, sure. Every sure, day. Sure. Okay, the tires are taped off. You got 30 seconds to move it in any direction. And if there's an earthquake, all bets are off. It doesn't count. Got it? Gonna be easy, my friend. Okay. <laughs>
So far, nothing. Ah, Jim. <laughs> Holy Jesus. Wait a minute. All right, time out. This doesn't count. Get up. Get up. Well, what is wrong with you? I told you to stay down. Oh, move the damn camera. You idiot. <laughs> That's it. $250,000. Jim, thanks so much for coming out. We really appreciate your help. As a small token of our appreciation, we got you a little envelope full of money. We had some interest money left from the 250, so it's okay. yours. That is unnecessary. First of all, thank you. This was way more informative than I ever expected. I really <laughs> learned a lot. Yes. And it's interesting. And I normally wouldn't take this except, whew, you know who could use this? My church. Um, so I'm. Uh, no, no way. Thanks, everybody. See you next time on Skepta Lab. You are. Thanks for watching everybody. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the CFI YouTube channel. Subscribe. Subscribe. Please hit the like button. You will hit the like button and subscribe. Watch the thing.